But I, although I will admit right now that the only way that they did manage to do it at this point is by having cameras around the room. So it could only fly in that room right. because the cameras actually noticed where it was and then fed the data to it. Yeah. But still, it's not much of a stretch to realize that it's going to be on board pretty soon with cameras going out. Everywhere. It just need a lot of processing on board. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, or a fast enough internet connection to do it offsite. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, watch this video. It is awesome. Yeah, well, I can see. Great. I can see the. I'm sure that the military will be interested in that. Oh, it would have to be. It's kind of sad that what's propelling all this crazy, awesome stuff. Robotics, stuff, all the military. Is the military like, uh, especially with DARPA? Well, it's pretty traditional, I guess. That most yeah. of that stuff is by them. It's like, oh, we can kill people better. Yeah, but it's a bit of a sad state that to propel this kind of technology, we need the mission to you know kill or defend. Well, the top comment it seems to be on like nearly most sites that have a voting mechanism is, uh, oh my god, they're just like the man hacks of Half-Life 2. It's like, oh, I bet you thought you were so original when posting it, but it is true. <laughs> they really are exactly the same. Yeah. It's just great. It's like, it, just put a camera on it, like, screw anything else. That Imagine just having these things floating around that maybe the battery life would only be two, three hours. You yeah. get a fleet of maybe, like, you know, ten of them. You could have them floating around for the whole day with a few spares. <laughs> it's great. And just perpetually monitoring something, just hovering with a camera. Why would you need to mount it to a post when you can have a flying dude? You can monitor those minorities. <sighs> yes, you could. Because that's what governments do, and it's wrong. Of course. <laughs> I'm sure there would, at least there would be some politicians that would be like, yeah, oh, of course they would. Or you look at Arizona's stupid oh, thing. Jeez. You know, 50,000 people turned out yeah, on protest. Yeah, that's that was pretty interesting. Cool. This guy's a messed up. Yeah. Okay, I got another sciencey story. Oh, yeah? Let's move away from the bigotry of America. It's robots! <laughs> no bigotry. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, uh, okay, the robots. The robots flying through windows and into our hearts. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to do two quick stories because there's not a lot to say about them, but they are amazing in terms of scientific advancement. Um, a team of... I should mention the other group because it wasn't just the UNSW. Um, it was the Uni University of New South Wales Centre for Quantum Computer Technology. They're based in Sydney, Sydney here in Australia. Technology. That's kind of cool. Those guys are awesome. Props Go to you guys. Australia. Fuck yeah, nice work. And the University of Wisconsin dash Madison. Cool. Why is it too now? Anyway. But what they did is um, they created a the world's smallest transistor and it's made from just seven freaking atoms. Like a working full on hardcore electronic transistor, which is, you know, what all computers and electronic devices are built off now. And that, the, tra the transistor created the entire computing revolution Everything. that we know of right now, that we're, you know, riding on. Um, and they've made... It, it, the entire thing, Moore's always all about just reducing the size. Yeah. Not even reducing the size of the transistor, just reducing the size of the, I think, where's it, the gaps between the... Yeah, the nanometers and, and the, stuff, yeah. and then just... So it's just increased increased there's less speed. room for the... There's less um, traveling distance for the electron, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much it. They made. I, I can't even get my head around that. Like, I, I like to think I have a rough grasp of how these things work, but I can't even begin to think how seven atoms can form a transistor. I'm trying it in my mind right now. Like, well, they use hypothetically to think how I posi how they would be positioned, but I'm really totally out of my element here. No, no yeah. clue. Well, they, no they clue. used um the thing called a scanning tunneling microscope. Oh, I've heard of that. Which I'm not sure how it works, but I'm pretty sure they use lasers to erase. <laughs> <laughs> lasers. Here's what they said. That, um, they created the electronic device until they have a uh, crystalline silicon which have been replaced just seven individual silicon atoms with phosphorus atoms. So it's silicon and phosphorus. I, I think so. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's going along pretty well. It's ridiculous. Apparently, but it's... apparently here, um, the have you seen this picture before where... um. They made the IBM logo out of just atoms. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Apparently that was 20 years ago. Huh. So they've been able to do this for a long time. And I remember like just a few years ago, they came out with the a, an image of a structure of a particular molecule. Oh, yeah. And you could see the hexagon, like hexa, hexagonal sort of atomic structure of this molecule. That's cool. cool. <laughs> I remember them making a gear like nanoscale, but I don't think it's on the same level as like atoms. Yeah. And say, this is cool, but, I mean, this took them, obviously, a long time to make this one yeah. transistor. It, it's not really something you can put into yeah. the ship. And I, I, have, I don't think there's any way you can do this from a top-down approach when you're talking this mm. level of, like, quantum scale. I think it needs to be a bottom-up approach. It needs to be, like, self well, see, this, If it is with lasers and all of that, it probably is very much a top-down that they needed all of this stuff to create it just with yeah. seven. But see, there's no way you can scale it up. Like, how many transistors and computers now? It's like... Oh, trillions. Yeah, there's... 
so many, it's ridiculous. You can't do that Initialize it. one by one by one by one. No. You need this self-organizing molecular computing Well, see, that would be cool. Like, even if you can do it on, like, you know, the yeah. micro scale, like, but that, it's still just incredible. I don't think you can do it at this stage until we have mm. nanotechnology where there's little nanobots organizing it. Yeah. Um, okay, the next, the next one I've got is... Um, these guys at researchers at Joseph Fourier University in France have created a new biocell that harnesses oxygen and glucose from the body to produce electricity. So what they've actually done is they've created this device which it doesn't need batteries. It is its own battery. What it does is it uh, pulls glucose and oxygen from the body and then converts that into electricity. And so they're saying that actually it can work better than many pacemaker batteries. And so this That's is, awesome. this is, you know, bi it's biofuel cells. So we can actually, we're moving into a stage now where, yeah, you know, like, like I think our pacemakers, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm pretty sure that they put a battery in and that battery has to be replaced after a certain amount of time. So they have to have another operation to yeah, you know, replace the battery. But if we can get biofuel cells that last long enough. Um, that is so cool. Yeah. And this could start a cyborg revolution. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you can actually get stuck getting power that way. Yeah. Well, it was like something I heard before that, um, I have no idea where I heard it, but it was something about, um, powering things off your urine and they just had like this thing, <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of funny, they, they yeah. chucked this thing in your bladder and it just got power that way. Well, yeah. It was like, cause it's really acidic and apparently that you can yeah. make power somehow. Was like, well, oh, the other big yeah. thing is they, they worked out how to do this without any, um, contaminants entering Ooh. the body. Okay. Well, that's good. So. I mean, acidic and yeah. reacting with your urine. That yeah, true. I mean, chucking something little... in your bladder and it's like, ooh, <laughs> urine powered. Yeah. I mean, that's a selling point. That's what you're going to put on the front of your box. It's like having a decoding... Decoding? What's the word? <laughs> Eroding battery in your... Urethra. Urethra. <laughs> <laughs> you think kidney stones are bad? Ooh. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> God, our jokes suck. <laughs> We try, we try. We try. Um, the next one I'll go on to is... Okay, I'm going to go on to Sony's one. Sony's one You haven't is... talked about that yet? No. I, when... s I spoke about the quadricopter. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Quadricopter Continue. was cool. This Continue. One... Thank you. Thank you. This one is very, very cool. It is... There's not much really to it. They Sony has now released a screen or a demo to screen that can keep on playing even when you wrap it up and it's, it's small enough to wrap around a pencil and it'll still keep on playing. Cool. Like, that, that, that's just incredible. That, that, that this, like, words fail me that just how cool this is. But we're really getting to that spot. Like, we were talking about it before that um, you could just, I mean, once this gets cheap enough, which it obviously will, that like we were looking... Type yeah, thing. when we were looking 10 years ago, I was checking out this magazine I used to subscribe oh, to. Yeah, yeah. A 21-inch CRT monitor was $3,900. This was their top of the line one. Australian. Top of the line, Australian. So it would have been like, what, one and a half times that US? I'd yeah. Back then, probably. Yeah, and it was the Sony Trinitron type thing, but $3,900 for a 21 inch flat screen. Whereas I was just on a, a deal website today mm -hmm. that was selling a 22 inch Dell flat screen for $99. Yeah. Like, holy crap. <laughs> I mean, this is probably going to go the same way because, I mean, screens are ubiquitous everywhere. It's going to yeah. happen. I mean, like, 10 years from now, we're probably going to see this, like, you know, the, all the future movies and all that, all the science fiction movies, like, on cereal boxes or on, like, your beer and all of that and just anything. <laughs> it's not for, like, promotion. It's just for, like, you know, the bubbles going up and, I mean, doing all this cool stuff. Like, it becomes sense. It becomes just so ridiculously cheap that you don't have to worry. And this is the beginning part of it.